Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. In the last episode, we finally got some workout time with our good buddy Sulu, and he became fit as a fiddle. And now he's being really annoying in certain areas by sniffing out hint coins with a very obnoxious voice. In this episode, though, we are headed into the mines to find something even greater than hint coins. Possibly gold, possibly the answers that we are looking for revolving around the Elysium Box. And we also found a hint coin, I guess. And another hint coin! And a thingy that I don't care about. Uh, let's see, Sulu, can you sniff out the last one before I find it? Uh, maybe there isn't even a third one to begin with. I guess not. Not even a puzzle or anything like that? Okay, there you go. This door isn't going to open, Professor. Yes, it would seem we need to solve this puzzle first. Puzzle number 79, the gear switch. The button that opens up the door in front of you is buried deep within the machine, so you can't push it directly. However, by pulling the knob at the top of the left, top to the left or right, you can move the various gears and plates in the machine, allowing you to press the button at the bottom. In order to hit the open button, should you pull the knob toward A or B? So just a 50-50 chance. Hint number one. When one gear rotates with another, the two gears must rotate in opposite directions. Use the memo function to keep track of the direction of each gear's rotation. Hint number two. The gear at the very bottom has to rotate clockwise to hit the switch, so the board of teeth directly above it will need to move to the right. Make sense? Now continue that line of thought as you move up toward the knob. Hint number three. The board of teeth underneath the three gears at the top needs to move to the left. Therefore, the gear directly above it needs to rotate clockwise. Keeping, keep going until you reach the knob at the top. Honestly, we're literally just like turning it to the left or to the right. I feel like if... I feel like if Layton ever goes to like a new building that he hasn't been to recently, he isn't sure if the door is a push or a pull door. Like he calls it a puzzle. He's like, this looks like a puzzle. I wonder how we are supposed to open this door. And we have two possible solutions. If he gets it right on the first try, then like he's good to go and he gets pick a rats. But like if he gets it wrong, he's like, oh no, oh no. Let me rethink that. It's B. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. Nicely done. That's a lot of explanation for a 50-50 chance. Wait, it said something funny at the end. It was like, since there are only two possible answers for this- Oh god, that noise scared me. Uh, you could have just guessed, but we're sure you thought the problem out before answering right. Wow, way to, like, sass the people who either got hint coins or did something wrong or, uh, looked it up online. Excellent! The door is open now. Let's proceed on. Okay, you got that. Final hint coin should be right around here. Possibly. I think. I looked at it. I saw the picture. It was around here somewhere. Should I just stop caring? Probably. Am I going to? Probably not. There you go. Okay, cool. Let's go. Uh, let's see what we got here. We got another one right there. And another one right there. Found one. And according to Sulu, one more right here. Okay. Oh, geez. Didn't mean to go in there. Just wanted to look around a bit more if there were any puzzles for us. Yes, there is! Seems to be like the final frontier where we just get a bunch of puzzles in every room. Look, there's something on the wall here. That is most certainly a puzzle. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Not everything can be a puzzle, Professor Layton. Puzzle number 78, a maze of doors. All the doors in the maze below only open in one direction. Each door can be opened by pushing from the direction shown below, but when approached from the opposite direction, no amount of pulling or pushing will open it. If you try to go through the whole maze from the start and pass through every room, you'd never make it to the exit. However, this feat would be possible if only one of the doors could open in the opposite direction. Can you find and circle this door? Hint number one. Let's review this puzzle's conditions. You need to make one door open in the opposite direction, and you must pass through every room on your way to the exit. But no one ever said you can pass. You can only pass through each room once. Hint number two. Starting from the in sign, you'll soon bump into a door that should open on the opposite way. So to proceed, one of the first doors you meet will have to open in the opposite direction. The upper door in the first room and the two doors in the room on the immediate right of the first room open in a direction that keeps you from passing through. One of these three doors is the door you'll need to change. Hint number three, the upper door in the first room is fine the way it is. So the solution is this door 
right here. Here goes. That was almost too easy. You did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yeah, live action Dora movie is coming out and I can't believe it. Perhaps the miners made puzzles to pass the time between shifts as they worked in the mine. Because of course they did. And hey, another key. Getting really close to the end of these diaries. My father fell ill from that sickness and has passed on. I also heard that many of the people who left Full Sense have formed a small village a safe distance from town. I imagine she lives there now too. I've decided to send her a letter. As Duke, I can't leave town. But I've entrusted my message with a man who is passing through town. Now all I can do is wait for her to reply. Only two more to go. And hey, we finally solved more than 100 puzzles. That's really cool. Head on in here. Now this place. Wait, what does it say? What did this switch before? I do hope this isn't part of the lift. <laughs> what? Uh, get that. Uh, don't want to click the elevator because that's probably where the puzzle is. Uh, nothing else anywhere, it seems. Uh, wow, there isn't anything clickable around here, actually. So, we just go downwards. We'll need to get the lift running again if we want to head farther into the mine. But how do we do that? Aha, I see some severed wires over there. I bet they're the reason the lift isn't moving. Let's see. Hmm, yes. Go ahead and reconnect them, Luke. That should fix our problem. You can trust Luke with it. That seems dangerous. Puzzle number 80, the elevator switch. Uh, in the UK, it's called the Puzzling Lift. I kind of like that name better, but whatever. Oh, but I don't like what it is going to be. It's a sliding puzzle. God darn it. Okay, you know the drill. Just show you the hints and let's get started. Okay, that one wasn't too bad, but I somehow messed it up along the way, so... Oh, uh, was it say? Oh, listen, did you hear that? It sounds like the elevator's up and running again. Yeah, it could be done in, less, in as few as 12 moves, and we're good to go. Oh, the lift is making some noise. I think it's fixed. Or it's breaking down. Excellent. I suppose our next move should be to head down then. Get that. And take the elevator. Huh. Got a hint coin. Got a elevator. We got, uh, wait, what? The floor smells of mold, bleh. The entire floor is not clickable, good to know. Got a hand coin right there. And finally right there, cool. What do you think, Luke? Could you, could this save hold some of the journals that Greenco mentioned? Well, we won't know until we open it, but how do we open it? The lock is rather complicated. Let me see if I can decipher the code. The Code of Princess? No. The puzzle number 81, the old safe. Find the four number code that opens the safe. You can use the numbers 0 through 5 in your answer, but each number can be used only once. The small lights next to each row of numbers are the key to finding the code, as they tell you how much in common that row has with the final code. Each white light indicates a number that matches one in the code, but is in a different place within the sequence. An orange light indicates a number that is in the code, and in its correct spot. Tap the numbers at the bottom to enter the code. Hint number one. Start by figuring out which numbers belong in the code regardless of order. Hint number two. You may have already noticed, but every number in the code is in the very top row of numbers. Two of the numbers in 4150 are even in the correct spot relative to where they, are. they should be in the code. Hint number three. Take a look at the third row of numbers. You can see that two numbers match ones in the code and are in the correct position. Since you know that code uses 4, 1, 5, and 0, you could assume that 0 and 1 from this row are part of the code and in their appropriate spots. Now just figure out where 4 and 5 go. 
The solution is zero. One. Five. Four. I know why the second one went backwards and then this the last two went forwards, but whatever. Consider this puzzle solved. Huh. Wonderful. That's right. Another ominous noise. That did the trick. Have a look at this, Professor. Oh, this looks like a worker's journal. This is just the thing we've been looking for, Luke. Perhaps it could shed some light on what's transpired here. Let's see what it says. We dug up some funny mineral that I'd never seen before here in this Duke's gold deposit. He's sure the ore could be refined into some other kind of precious metal. Personally, I feel like there this I feel like there's something sinister about the stuff. Not that the Duke cares one bit. No, he'll have his way and we'll keep digging. I'd bet my life on that. Some other kind of precious metal? But I thought this was a gold mine. Ever since we unearthed that awful ore, folks have been dropping like flies from the unknown illness. So many people in town are sick, and that half our workforce here has stopped coming in. What in the world is going on here? Gosh, that's just terrible. So many people that must have been sick. Full senses run of run as a gleaming beacon of prosperity is at its end. This town is cursed and ruined. I suspect we're just days away from shutting down this awful mine for good. I leave this diary behind so that anyone who tries to reopen the mine thinks twice. How odd. The date of this last entry is from just about 50 years ago. But that can't be right. The mine was up and running until recently. Yes, or so we've been told. But this has me thinking. Both this diary and the Green Coast suggest a connection between the Elysium box and the events in the mine. From what I could tell, all this traces back to a single man, the Duke himself. Even if he himself is long gone, his castle may yet contain the answers to all of our questions. So, um, does that mean we have to go visit the spooky castle for ourselves? Ha ha ha, do you mean to tell me you're scared of the place? Of course not, a million vampires wouldn't scare me. If there truly is a vampire living in that castle, I'd very much like to take make his acquaintance. Don't say things like that, Professor. If we met one, I'm sure he'd eat us on the spot. The Professor and Luke decide to venture out to hers and castle to be acquainted with the vampire. Layton, you always know how to make things sound so pleasant. I believe we retrieved the records we come for. Let's take our leave now. But what's this? The lift is out of service again. I say, this will do. Oh, but look here. There's a set of buttons built into the wall. Surely one of these buttons will send the lift back up. But they're all disconnected. Another puzzle shoehorned in. The wires connecting the elevator to the button controlling it have somehow been severed. However, if you could connect the negative and positive wires on the tops to the wires carrying on the same charge below, you could fix the elevator. To do this, you need to draw lines between sets of X-shaped terminals. Draw two lines to connect each positive and negative terminal to its counterpart and get the elevator running again. Hint number one. You need to connect wires with the same symbol together, so plus goes with plus and minus with another minus. If you examine the tangle of wires, finding the solution should be simple enough. Hint number two. To make things simpler, identify the wires that are connected to some other area off screen and eliminate them as possible answers. In the top row of wires, the rightmost wire and the one third from the right run off screen. Hint number three, the leftmost terminal in the upper set of four is connected to the wire carrying a negative current. Now it's up to you to figure out the other three terminals you need to use. The solution is a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. Just do that. Uh, well, I don't want it to be a red line. Does it matter? Uh, I hope that's all you have to do. Please don't mess me up here now, game, okay? Are we good? This should do the trick. Okay, there we go. Super happy to see a smiling Layton. Ah, wonderful. 
because yeah, they look blue and red in the final picture. We're back in business. The elevator's working again. The buttons appear to be working. We should be able to leave the mine now. There we go. And head on out. Or not. Let's get out of here, Professor. Okay, now they're making me do that. Sure. Why not? And out here. Gotta walk all the way back. I'll slow like it. Hell, hey, you look familiar. Always nice to see a familiar face. Hola, friend son. Am I glad to see you? I was sure I'd never see another soul ever again. Hey, I know you. I was traveling El Mundo, and last thing I remember, I was El Transisto to Egypt. Tell me, Bite, how long ago was these fine pyramids built? Sorry, sir, but you're not in Egypt. Do you remember how you got here? I haven't the foggiest, senor. Un minuto, I'm headed to Africa. The next minuto, I'm down here. With one, no one around, I started poking at this thing to pass the time, and I think I broke it. Aya! Help me fix the vous play. That's number 77. Balancing ornaments. I thought it said bouncing omelets. I was like, mmm, omelets. Small ornaments dangle from a metal bar, and they've thrown the bar off balance. The five ornament strings are spaced equally apart, and each of the three types of ornaments weighs a different amount. The heaviest ornament weighs the same as the three of the lightest ones, while a medium ornament weighs the same as two of the lightest ornaments. Place one of the three ornaments in a rectangle in the space marked with a question mark to restore the bar's balance. Hint number one. The center strand of ornaments won't affect the balance of the bar, so ignore it. Also, the two strands hanging farthest out on the bar are the same weight, so try comparing the ornaments on the far left of the ornaments to the far right. You might find out something new. Hint number two. Look at the strands on the far left and the far right. While they both contain sun and moon ornaments, only the far right strand has a star. By comparing the ornaments on these two strands, you could probably figure out how many suns and moons it takes to equal the weight of a star. Hint number three. A single star weighs the same as one sun and one moon together. Now that the weight of the star is clear, you should be able to compare the two strands next to the center strand. The solution is a crescent moon. Consider this puzzle solved. Huh, wonderful. Wonderful, as Professor Oak would say. Good job. Well, that's a lot of text for a multiple choice thingy. Oh, wonder ball, a million ugly gatos, me now me, mona me. Now I can finally leave this musty tomb. Somehow this guy is offensive. To somebody, and everybody, and nobody, all at once. I don't know how many days have passed with me waiting to hear back from her. It's been so long. In fact, that even trying to figure out when I sent her that letter was has become difficult. Maybe she really doesn't love me. Maybe she's living in some other town, happily married to another man. We only got one book left. Wonder how this story is going to wrap up. By any chance you want some tea before we go? Doesn't look like it. At least not right now, he doesn't. So, where to now? Hello! Oh, Mr. Legion. Hello, mister. What brings you to these parts? Well, to be blunt, sir, I've been doing a bit of, um, spying on you for some time now. You've led quite the investigation, and it won't be long before it all snaps into focus for you. It is for that reason I feel I can no longer hide the truth of this place from you. What are you getting at, sir? You've seen my studio. All those pictures of the town here. There are pictures I took. The ones in the station are my work as well. Those photographs have held my interest for some time now. As they should, Mr. Layton. Do you remember our last meeting in my shop? The, you pointed out a certain strange phenomenon occurring in photos taken within full sense. Yes, just one curiosity among the many we've seen in this town. Feels as though the whole of our full sense conspires to keep a secret hidden from us. Your feeling is right, sir. You see, full sense is a cursed town. Cursed? To call it such may seem base, but I assure you that the town's past is the very definition of the word. 
Perhaps this curse is a punishment we are meant to endure for the great mistakes of our past. But all nightmares eventually end, and I feel it won't be long now before we awaken. Huh? I encourage you to head to that castle in the distance and to meet with Duke Anton. Is this Anton the eldest son of the previous Duke? He is. Duke Anton has presided over Harrison Castle since his father's passing some time ago. I served the Harrison family until that day 50 years ago when I left it all behind and fled. I don't think Anton will ever forgive me. You see, he's a man who abhors betrayal above all else. What transpired 50 years ago? The answers to all your questions can be found at the castle. I urge you to head there. Perhaps a voice of reason like yours might persuade Duke Anton to listen. If you believe it will settle the matter, we'll visit the castle. Yes, see with your own eyes what's become of this town. Perhaps we'll finally be able to reach the end of this dark tunnel we've been traveling through. I believe our destination has chosen us this time. You know where we must go next, don't you? The people we've talked to are scared to death of the vampire they say is living up in the castle. And that chat with the photographer only raises more questions. What happened 50 years ago? And what the heck is going on in that castle? Almost overnight, the Hurson family became incredibly wealthy when they discovered that gold mine. If we can understand the story behind that, our questions about the Elysian box will be answered. But how are we going to get the castle, Professor? I don't think it's going... I don't think it's the kind of place we could just waltz into. I thought by now you'd know exactly how to get in, Luke. What do you mean? The carriage tracks we saw on the road to the castle were still very fresh. It would seem that the carriage is bringing something to the castle every day. We need only follow the carriage to find our way into the castle. Oh, of course. That carriage is our ticket in. Now you've got the picture. I'm ready to go whenever you are, Professor. Just lead the way. The symbol is actually a crest belonging to the family who once ruled Fulsense, the Herzens. It's clear that the Herzen family and the Elysian box are deeply connected to each other. And he's got a new puzzle for us! No stops. This fork in the road is my turn. What's the big idea? Oh, well, since you came all the way out here, why I get to try a hand this puzzle I got? This guy's weird. Like, he just shows up right at the end. He has, like, no... Oh, hey, Disappearing Act 5. Time for the funnies. Hold on to your hats, because this one's going to be rough. Just like before, you could move any ball on the board below as long as it satisfies the following conditions. Okay, give it a try. So, same rules as before. You don't need to have it in the middle. I thought the last one, you actually needed to have it into the middle. But here we go. Here are probably the funniest hints in the game. Hint number one. Remember all that stuff we told you about thinking out this one on your own? Okay, fine. You could have one more hint. But this is seriously the last one you'll get. We strongly recommend that you uh, that you not start off this puzzle by moving a ball into the center space. Instead, your first goal should be to move things so you get rid of one of the four balls at the very edge of the shape. But where to start? Hint number two. We were only kidding about not giving you any more hints. Start by moving a ball second from either edge in the third row from the bottom. Move this ball down to clear one ball and then across to remove that ball at the bottom of the shape. Then you can move one ball in the third row from the bottom into the space that the ball you used in the first move originally occupied. Then move the ball you used to from your first move into the spot that opened up. Hint number three. If you follow hint 2 and continue playing a little yourself, wow, sass much, you should be able to rearrange the remaining balls into a triangular pine tree-like shape like the one in Disappearing Act 3. Use what you've learned to finish the rest of this puzzle. Not as funny as what I remember, maybe I'm still thinking of a different puzzle from a different game. Oh boy, this one's gonna take a while, so let's get this started, huh? Let's get it started in here.
go. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. Over 3,000 pick rats Nicely done. One variation of this puzzle challenges the player to complete the puzzle in the fewest number of moves possible. For purposes of this puzzle, multiple jumps in a row using a single ball still only count as, you, as one move. If you've got some time on your hands, why not try this puzzle again and see how few moves you need to complete it. And if you can get into the center. You tore through that puzzle like it was nothing. Wild things in this forest, pal. If you're set on going deeper, you gotta be prepared for danger. Like dangerous puzzles? I don't know. Uh, are we really just going to the castle now? I was hoping we would have either had all the camera pieces or uh, had all of the T locations figured out, but we don't have either. I feel like at this point in the game, like if we go into the castle, then that's like the final chapter. I'm almost afraid to go in there because it might be a point of no return, but I feel like they would tell us beforehand like they did in Curious Village. So for that reason, I'm just going to trust the game and go forward. That's the mine. Let's go to the castle. The gate is still shut tight. In order to get in, we'll simply have to wait for the carriage to arrive. Say, there's the carriage now! Quick, hide! Uh. The gate's open now, and we've escaped their detection. If we're going to enter, now is our only chance. Move quickly. Oh, you said quickly, my bad. <laughs> You're sure that this forest is the only way into the castle, right? I'm not going to lie, this place is beyond spooky. Hi! Luke, what's the matter? A c, c ghost It appeared just a second ago over there! Oh, Luke, you know that there are no such thing as ghosts. Your eyes must be playing tricks on you. But I'm positive I saw it, Professor! Deep breaths, Luke. When on edge, even something as harmless as a gnarled tree can look like a ghost. Don't you remember that puzzle about a tree that looked like a ghost? How about we do it again, just to refresh your memory? I suppose so. Feeling better? Good, come along. We mustn't let we mustn't let the carriage get too far ahead. Now I think I love this song. It's probably gonna be the song they use. One. Excuse me, Sulu, I was enjoying the music. Excuse me, puzzle, I was enjoying the music. Oh boy, what do we have here? Look, my boy, I think I found some lantern here. Cool. Yeah, I'm probably gonna be using that song for the end slate, though you probably know that already. Puzzle number 121, Light the Forest 1. In the UK it's called Light the Way. Sure. Use lamps to light up the dark forest paths. For each lamp, assume its light reaches to the end of the straight road. Use the fewest lamps possible to light all the paths. So where should the lamps go? Hit number one. The fewest number of lamps you need is four. Hit number two. The straight the straight paths are easy enough to contend with the with because a lamp will light an entire straight path end to end. The problem is the diagonals. So think about how to light all the diagonal paths first. Hit number three. You need to place lamps at the end of the three diagonal paths, and the last lamp will go on one of the four possible corners. The solution looks a little bit like this. Tappity tap, tappity tap, tappity tap, and tappity tap. A bit trickier since it doesn't show you the lights, uh, what it'll look like right then and there. It just like gives you a quick glimpse of it, so you have to kind of remember. But there you go, good job. The paths were pretty creepy, but that was just because it was dark, right? Aha, now we've got a light. Curious though, isn't it? Who would learn, who would leave a perfectly good lantern out here? I can't imagine someone simply forgot it here. It's almost like someone is leaving a trail for us. Let's see what else we got around here. Got that. And another hidden puzzle, wow. This forest just goes on and on, and it's darker than ever before. Yes, but uh, yes, but fortunately, someone left behind a second lantern. Let's see what we are here. Are we seriously doing a second one right away? Yeah, light the forest too, okay. It's the same exact thing. Do I even want to read the hints? Are they funny? Hint number one, the fewest number of lamps you need is five. 
And number two, the diagonal roads need three lamps. So think about those first. Make sure they don't mess up the diagonal of the lamps or the replacement of the lamps and that the horizontal and vertical paths. Hint number three, the two lamps uh, not being used in light diagonals will have to go on T and L intersections. Uh, so one goes here, one goes here, one goes here, one goes here, and one goes here. Here goes. Piece of cake. Does that last lantern on the screen have the third light the path puzzle? Finally, some light. Not the path. Is, not that the path is easier to follow. Let's move ahead. Or now that it's easier to follow. Okay, let's go. Uh, no. Okay, we can still examine that lantern, but whatever. Uh, thank you. We got that coin, and we are good to go. Let's go forward. A mushroom. That totally doesn't look standout-ish in the slightest. Get that coin, get that coin. And any more? There's gotta be one more, right? Somewhere, maybe, possibly. Fine, against better judgment, I'll have to eat the mushroom. Look at that strange mushroom, Professor. Curious, I've never seen this type before. Let me study it just a moment before we move on. Puzzle number 125, Forest Mushrooms. Collect all the mushrooms in this forest as you pass through. Each circular clearing on the map contains mushrooms. You don't want to spend too long in this creepy forest though, so find the quickest route through that visits the clearing only once. Stay on the roadways. This is a Super Mario RPG puzzle. Hit number one, go right first. That's it. <laughs> Hit number two, you head to the goal from the right. That's also it. Hint number three, don't give up. Hints one and two should shorten the course for you significantly. Also, you don't need to use every path. And the solution is uh, like this. Huh? Okay. Uh, up here. And that. I guess we could stop here. Hopefully that's not, like, wrong. Uh, that looks good. Down here. Head on up. Over here. And down. And that way. And I think we're good. Just leave it to me. Thank you, Smiling Luke, for easing my worries. That was almost too easy. Mushtastic. Okay, I guess it's the beginning of the Layton series trying to make puns. Uh, it doesn't start out too great, but maybe they'll get better in due time. Now that your curiosity is satisfied, can we please move on, Professor? Yeah, why did Luke solve that when we was Layton examining the mushroom? Here's another lantern. Gee, I wonder what puzzle this is going to be. Puzzle number 123, Light the Forest 3. Third verse, same as the second and first. Hint number one, the fewest number of lamps you need is six. Hint number two, there are six horizontal paths and six vertical paths. So you uh, know so you know you need at least six lamps just to light all them. Use them as use that as your starting point. Wow, I'm really out of it. I gotta finish recording this LP. Hint number three, the top right corner def definitely needs a lamp. And I definitely need a break, but I'm not gonna get one. Uh, put one right there. Put one right here, and there, up here, right there, and right there. And we're good. Hmm, let's see if this works. Piece of cake. Good job. And we're finally done with all of those. I can see again, that's much better. We're at 40 minutes, so we should probably wrap things up for now. Uh, next time on Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box, we will continue our way into the forest with this oh-so-lovely music. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.